Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Achono, and welcome to the next episode of our Sterilization mini-series. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the actual details of the format, and we're going to go through it bite by bite to, to ensure that uh, that we understand how it works, and this is just going to be like another one of those planning uh, situations where we're going to have to just make sure that everything we actually uh, will put into this format makes sense, and uh, and just, just so that we have an overview um, of how it's structured. So, uh, last time we, we basically did, uh, take a look at this database thing, right? How inside the database, we've got this head, we've got this object array, and then we've also got, uh, uh, a bunch of fields inside the object, right? And then a bunch of field definitions and whatever inside there, just to make sure that we understand how fields work and all that. And then a footer at the end. So this is the, this is the core structure. Okay. But how does it work? Like actually, so what's inside the header, what's inside the field definition, all of that kind of stuff. That's what, that's what we're going to take a look at today. So step one, the header, what is inside our header? Well, uh, a few things. Okay. Now we're going to go through this, uh, bite by bite, essentially. And if you guys see anything that doesn't make sense to you, or if you see something and you're like, hey, wouldn't it be better to do this? Then please, le please leave a comment below. I will address them uh, individually, probably. Uh, I'm actually kind of bulk recording a bunch of episodes in a row without putting them out, uh, just because I am trying my best to keep this series daily right now, which means that I'm going to have to do a lot of forward planning, which is what I'm doing here. I'm recording like two or three episodes today. Um, <clears throat> so because of that, I won't really see your comments until after I've recorded the next two or three videos, but I will get to them eventually. And we might do a formal like review of the series or whatever, uh, with all your concerns. But, um, basically everything here should be pretty, pretty rock solid. So anyway, we've got this header, um, uh, and then what's going to be inside this header. So essentially the first thing we're going to have is an identification thing. So we're going to have two bytes. So this entire system, let me just quickly, um, because this format's going to make more sense once I explain what it's for. This is for my, this is for the game programming series, uh, called rain. Rain is the name of the game. I don't know why it's called rain. It's just called rain. Okay. Um, so this multiplayer networking component, I have called rain cloud. Okay, because like, you know, cloud is like, you know, it's on the cloud. It's like a network. It's cl like cloud computing type of deal, right? Um, and then rain cloud also kind of makes sense. It's like kind of like a storm cloud, rain cloud thing. Anyway, I, I, I quite like that. I, I quite like that name. So that's kind of the name of uh, this kind of serialization format will be for rain cloud, essentially. And rain cloud, of course, is the library in charge of all the networking for uh, rain. Okay, so... That being said, uh, we're going to have two bytes at the start, which are just basically going to be R and C. Okay. This is going to be two bytes. And these are going to be the very first two bytes in the file. Okay. So when you read this, uh, you are like, okay, this is an RC file or something like that, right? You know that it's going to be, um, it's going to be our serialization format. Okay. So again, as I mentioned before, this is like kind of like a sanity check thing and to make sure that we're actually to basically identify what file this actually is, because we have no idea otherwise, right? Um, whether or not we actually do perform a sanity check or we just skip these bytes and we assume that there is something is another matter of discussion and whether or not it's also necessary to send these bytes over the actual network. Again, up for debate, but I personally think we should. Anyway, I'm not going to keep running bytes everywhere. So I'm just going to say, out here that this is going to be like the f two bytes, right? So this is, this is like the beginning. This is like offset. This is address zero. Uh, and then we're going to kind of go on, uh, here as we go. So the first two bytes, RC done. The next two bytes, uh, are going to be the version. Okay. So this is going to be a short, hence it's two bytes long. It's just going to be a two byte or a 16 bit integer. Um, and it's going to identify our version. So yeah, we'll probably just start off with like version one and then go to version two, three, four, etc. Right. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. Uh, it's also quite popular by the way, to have two kind of like two, like two of these, right? So you might have like, um, two and two bytes, like four bytes total to describe the version, or you might even have eight bytes total, four plus four to describe the version. And you, you would have something called a min. Oh, sorry. Um, like a, a min version essentially, which is the minor version. And then like a major and like a major version, 
right? So like OpenGL uses this kind of system. Uh, so do many other things, by the way. OpenGL is just one example uh, where you might have something like uh, if you're talking about OpenGL 4.4 rather than storing that as a decimal, which we, would be a bit weird. You've got the major version, which is this one over here, and then the minor version, which is this one over here. Okay, so that's something that you could do as well if you wanted to. This is not really that necessary though. So we're going to just store two bytes here, which is going, which is, which is going to describe the version. Okay. You probably could get away with storing one byte. I've left two bytes there just in case we want to do like a major minor kind of thing, because in that case, the first byte could be the major version. The second byte could be the minor version, something like that, or the other, around, the other way around as well. We get up for discussion because remember one byte can store up to 255 uh, from anywhere from zero to 255, right? That's the, the largest number it can store is 255, which is FF, right? Which is way enough for us. But anyway, um, We'll actually talk about that as well because Java doesn't actually have anything called like an unsigned byte. It's something called signed bytes and we'll deal with that later. It's not really a problem though. That's a spoiler, <laughs> but it's not really a problem. Anyway, um, the next thing we'll have is going to be one byte and these are going to be our flags. Okay, so this is actually going to be a bit field. Uh, we're going to talk more about bits and bytes uh, in the next video, okay? But this is essentially going to be what's called a bit field. Now, essentially this flag is going to be a collection of booleans. Uh, normally, if you were to write out a boolean or something like that, you'll notice the boolean is actually one byte. The reason a boolean takes up one byte, which to you might make no sense, right? And you would be correct in assuming that how does, why does it take up one byte? Surely a boolean is just one bit, right? It's only got two states, on or off, right? True or false. Um, why does it take up a whole byte? The reason it takes up a byte is because that is actually the lowest uh, size, I guess, that we can actually address, right, in memory. You cannot address bit by bit in memory, okay? That's not how hardware works. So because of that, um, we are left with uh, the minimum space that something can take up essentially being one byte. However, you can encode your booleans as bits, okay? So essentially, this flags thing is capable of storing eight booleans, okay? Um, one for each uh, bit, okay, in that byte. So that's what's gonna happen. I will show you exactly how that works uh, in future videos. But that's the idea. And, that, and having something like that is called a bit field. So for example, like the most significant bit might indicate whether or not this is compressed, for example, and we might put a one there. The next one might be like, you know, if this is in like a series, the other one might be like, which, um, I don't know, uh, encryption technology we're using, for example, or whether or not we're using that, and it might, it might be one. And then the next one might be something else. And you can see that we end up like with essentially like a bit field kind of situation. And then we can simply extract each bit and be like, if the bit is on, then, you know, that state is set to true. That's how, that's kind of how it works. But this is going to be our flags. So, so this will be like, essentially we have, we now have eight flags. Whether or not we use all of them is not really, I don't know. We might not, we might, we might. I really couldn't imagine using more than two of them right now, but uh, there, there will be things that pop up. Cool, uh, so those are our flags. Now the next thing is going to be the name. So we are going to store the name of the database because remember this is the header for the database, which is that single file. Um, so let's talk about how we can store names. So names are basically just a bunch of characters. Okay, so we might have something like, uh, as I said, for like we might call this uh, something like alpha. I don't know, I just made that up on the spot. This database might be called alpha, right? Alpha has five characters in it. The problem is that we don't know that alpha has five characters in it. And really we've got two options here. Uh, basically the problem is this. Once, you, once this gets encoded into the byte thing, we for example know right now that the sixth byte onwards, right, is going to be the name because the first five bytes are these things, right? So we know that byte number six, uh, starting from the top here, if this is byte one, um, will be uh, the beginning of name. But how do we know where name ends, right? Because you might be like, well, that's obviously when we run out of characters. But remember, characters are just numbers in binary, okay? And we have no idea really when this ends because it might go on for another character or it might stop somewhere short, right? We need to know how big it is. So we have two options for that, okay? There are really two options. And in fact, a lot of serialization formats actually pick both just as like a safety kind of precaution thing. But essentially we can either store the, the size of the string beforehand. So in this case, we would literally store like 
five, for example, beforehand. Uh, and then we have the letters A, L, P, H, A. And of course, this means that this, the next five bytes are going to be our string. So we can extract the next five bytes, pop them into a string and we're done. Okay. And then we know that whatever comes after that is already not part of the string anymore because we know that it's going to be five bytes long. Okay. That's one option. Option number one, right? Option number two is to simply have a null uh, termination character at the end there. So what that means is that you have your string. So you, we don't have this byte out the front. Uh, usually it would be more than one byte, by the way, because strings, you know, typically might be longer than 255 characters. If you've, got, if you've got like a long description for something, it might be like, I don't know, 500 characters or something, for example. So you would typically have like a short here, because again, that will, an unsigned short will allow you to have 65,536 uh, characters, 535 really, characters, okay? Uh, so you typically have like a short there instead of a instead of a byte But you could have a byte there if you like in this case We've just got one byte which says five so we know the string ends however We don't have this size in this case. We just have the letters a l uh, p uh, H a and then we have what's called a null ter like a termination character Okay, and what this is is essentially a backslash zero. That's what the character looks like It's a backslash and then a zero now a backslash zero is really just a zero, okay? So we have all of our uh, characters here, which are numbers such as like, I don't know what A is, 40 something or something, right? We have all these uh, characters here. And then at the end of the string, we have this zero, okay? And that means the string is over. And this is actually how uh, C++ and C store uh, char arrays or rather char like kind of C, C strings really in memory, right? We have... Uh, we have this pointer to the beginning of the, like we have this pointer to the first character. And then basically as far as, you know, we are concerned, the string continues on until that null termination character, until it reaches that termination character, which is why if you're like making your own string class and you forget to include this termination character, you're going to run into problems because uh, basically the string will run on until it sees the next zero in memory, which is possibly a, a while, <laughs> right? So you might have issues with that. But the idea is that's that's the second option. We could have a null termination character. We could also have both of these things, right? So we've got both a size and a termination character. We're probably going to just have a size, honestly, um, because I feel like that might be a bit better. Uh, I personally prefer having a size because you know, it's kind of more useful information, I feel. Um, and then we don't have to actually keep scanning until we reach the zero. We can immediately say, I want to scan these bytes. Um, that's just a personal preference. Performance-wise or whatever, there's no difference. Uh, uh, and as I said, a lot of formats have both, okay? But I wanted to mention that because it's important to realize how strings, for example, are stored in memory. Okay, so all that aside, we've got uh, this stuff and then we've got the name, okay? So the name, uh, first of all, have the name size, okay? So how many characters the name takes up. So this is going to be a two byte. As I said, it's going to be a short and this is going to be uh, essentially the name size, okay? Or the name count or something like that. Name length really is what I should call it. So throughout this format, I just wanna quickly mention here, throughout this format, length will uh, essentially kind of refer to uh, like a count, right? Whereas if you see the word size anywhere in the code, it actually means size in bytes, okay? Now you could use these interchangeably with this thing because we're going to be using standard non-wide characters, um, which essentially means that we're using ASCII, which essentially means that one character is one byte, no more or less, right? We can't have, we don't have two byte characters, which is something like UTF-8 or other encodings might use. In fact, I think UTF-8 uses it. But um, essentially we, we're not using wide wide chars, which means that we have two bytes for a char. Uh, we're, using, we're using just normal one byte characters, which means that length and size and count actually do mean the same thing. But anyway, uh, just something that's worth men mentioning. Okay, and then of course we have a variable length uh, array, of string, array of characters. Okay, so we've got a string. Um, and again, that is variable length, but worry not, we know how long it is because the previous two bytes actually describe how long it is. So we know when we stop. Okay. And that's that whole string situation. Okay. So that's how we store strings and that's how we will store the name of our database. So now that we've read the name of the name of our database, we at least now know what it's called. It's called alpha. Um, is that important? 
Is it important to have a name for our database? No, absolutely not. In fact, you would probably trim this if you were sending network packets because it's a waste of space. We do not care what the database is called, okay? The only reason we ever care about that is for like debugging purposes and whatnot, okay? There's no reason to have that name in there because it is not useful data at all. Okay, and again, you can see that this, for example, takes up five plus two bytes. It takes up seven bytes of space that is just absolutely worthless. So this is something that we might potentially cut from like the runtime kind of network uh, format. But right now we're just going to keep it in there because again, it's great for debugging and it's good to be able to have a name for our database. Okay, so next up we have... And this video, I was expecting this video to take like five minutes, but like that, I'm, I'm so wrong. I'm always wrong about video lengths. Anyway, the next thing we're going to have is uh, two things. We're going to have an object count, which will be a two byte thing, right? So this is going to be our object count. Now remember, arrays are also objects, and we'll get into that in a minute. But essentially, to basically what this, this short will describe is how many objects are in our database. So for example, we might have like seven objects or something like that, which means that you expect seven objects, essentially. Um, okay, and then that's pretty much it for our database. At the We're going to have all of our meaty kind of objects and arrays and whatnot in between, and then at the end, we're going to have the footer. Okay, and then let's talk about the footer real quick. So the foot is going to be um, <clears throat> the foot is going to be a two byte. Let me just put the size out of here. A two byte footer essentially, and it's going to be, uh, as I said just for now, it's going to be two bytes: one, two, three, and four. Okay. We'll talk about endianness, by the way, and how this this is like this isn't like a big endian kind of format here, but we'll uh, we'll talk about endianness and whatnot next time when we talk more about bits and bytes. Um, but uh, we will have like a footer that's essentially one, two, three, four, or something, just to be like, hey, this is the end of the file and everything is correct. Okay, cool. So let's talk about our objects. Okay, so objects over here. So what do objects contain? Well, we could do something like I mentioned with fields, how I mentioned that fields have something called a field definition. We could have an object definition for our objects, but I don't think I'm going to do that just because uh, it's potentially not really required. And also I'll show you guys how to implement something without a definition and with a definition. So I think that'll be useful as well. But I'm not gonna have an object definition, I'm just going to have the data straight up. Uh, which is basically the same as having a, by the way, it's the same as having an object definition kind of class. It's just that we're not having the class. So like the data structure will still be the same. We'll talk about this more. Um, it's kind of hard to explain all of this in, in a concise way. But basically what we've got is uh, the first thing we see with an object is a type. We absolutely have to have a type. Now, this is not the type of data inside the object. Okay, because remember the type of data inside the object is going to be in the field kind of subsection, right? This is the type of object. So this is going to be a one byte uh, type here, okay? And really, right now, all we care about are one of two options. It's either an object or it's an array. It's one of those two for now. That's absolutely it, okay? The reason we have to know which one it is is because the next few bytes are going to potentially have extra things if it's an array, okay? So, object or array. If it's an array, we're going to go over here and we'll talk about that in a second. If it's, a, if it's an object, we're going to go down here. So this is like almost like a flow diagram now, it's beautiful. So this, this object, right, what does it have next? Well, it's going to have a name, which means that we have a name length or a, yeah. So we've got our name length, we've got a T there. Um, and then we have, of course, the name of the object. So this might be something like entity or like entity A or something like that, right? Um, and then we're going to have the fields. So how are the fields going to be stored? Well, we're going to have a field count. Oh, that's, that's horrific. Come on, Joan, and try harder here. We're going to have a field count, which is just the number of fields that are in this object. Uh, and then we're actually going to have the fields. So the fields are going to go down here. And this is like another level of abstraction kind of. So the fields are going to work pretty simply. Uh, the fields are going to have a field definition, as I said, 
a definition, which we're going to go out here to, and then the actual data. Now the data in the field is, is just going to be a variable kind of uh, byte array, okay? Now, this is a field, right? Which means that it can really store one of two things. It could store an object or it could store primitive data. That's it right now, okay? Remember, objects do have the uh, objects do have the um, capability to also be an array. So arrays and objects are the same things, right? Um, as in, an array is an object, right? But essentially, we have something like that. Now, the definition is a bit more, is a bit more uh, interesting, okay? Because the definition contains everything that actually describes this data. Hence, it's called a definition, right? So usually, we'll have a two-byte type. Uh, this honestly could be one byte because I don't think we're going to have more than 255 different... Um... Yeah, this is going to be a one byte. I originally had this as a two byte, but it doesn't make any sense. We're going to have a one byte type, okay? And then we may have a two byte size. Now, the problem that I'm seeing with this is that this is kind of redundant because if we know the type of data, we also know the size of data, okay? However, if it's like an object, we may not know the size, but we can step into the object and figure out the size by looking at its fields, okay? So this might be something that you might want to do and we'll see how we go. But uh, size is something that, remember, for primitive data, you can work that out from type. For example, if the type says that we've got like an int 32, then we know that the size will be 4, right? 4 bytes, okay? So we don't need to work that out. Uh, as in, like, we don't need to store that as like an extra 2 bytes of space because we can work that out from the type. So that's something to think about, okay? Uh, we also have uh, the name length. Okay, and the name. So this is the name of the field. And that's it. So really what we need is the type and the name, okay? Now we've also got this thing here that will be stored at runtime called an offset. Okay, and an offset is going to be basically, hey, you've got a database, right? We've got our database up the top there. Uh, this field, starts at byte number 52, okay? So if you want to read this field, open up the database, go to the very beginning and essentially browse the 52nd byte. Now, I don't know why I wrote it like a zero X at the front of it, because that obviously makes that hexadecimal, which means it's not 52, but pretend that I didn't write this because I don't know why I did. Um, I'm just trying to be all bitey and all cool. But essentially that means that, oh, okay, it's the 52nd byte or whatever, which means that we can look up like array index 51 in our uh, data byte array, and that's the beginning of this field, okay? The offset, and if we wanna get the definition, well, the definition tells us the offset, so obviously we know everything about it. But that's how we can read the actual data. We may, we may or we may not integrate something like this because uh, if we've read the definition, we might as well read the data, but you know, just something to think about. Okay, cool. So there we go. There's the field and there is the data. Now, however, if the data is an object, we kind of go back up to, uh, up to, how can I draw this arrow? Well, I'll just draw it here. Oops, that's a bad idea. We basically go up to here. Okay, so we go back up here and we say, we say, what is it? Is it an object or is it an array? So we've, we've covered objects. Objects, pretty simple, right? They basically contain a name and a bunch of fields which have definitions which describe those fields. That's it. Very, very simple stuff. The array, however, is just a little bit more complicated because we just need to know essentially what is in the array, okay, and how much of it there is. So for the array, we have, uh, we have a type, obviously, because, um, we need to have a type because that, that needs to mirror this. This is the type that is in both of these. So I probably don't need to write this again here, but just so you know, the first byte of an object or an array is this type because it has to say, I'm an object or I'm an array, okay? After that, we've got kind of the same situation. We've got a name, obviously. So we've got uh, name length. And we've got the name which is variable length, of course, name. Uh, 
And then what we've got is essentially uh, we've got the type of data. So this is usually something you would keep in a field, but an array doesn't have fields because an array is like one big field, right? So it's very common for you to actually have an array as a field, which you can have because fields can, of course, contain objects as well as primitive data. <clears throat> so um, the name, uh, after the name, we have uh, essentially the type, which is two bytes. Again, you can work out the size from the type, so we don't really need to worry about having this size, okay? Uh, and then we just have the count, which is also going to be two bytes. So this is the count of how many elements are actually in this array, okay? So again, if we were serializing like an array of integers, as I said, which were the pixels of like a full HD monitor, for example, that would be two million. This count would be two million. Now you may have noticed already that this is a problem because two million is not a number we can store into. Two million is barely a number that we can store in an integer, really. Uh, no, sorry, that's two billion. I meant, uh, yeah, it's not it's not a number we can store here because even if this was unsigned, it would only be like sixty-five thousand. So two million is something that we need an integer for, which is why this count is actually going to be an integer. Now that does limit us to two billion. Uh, I think that's enough, though. Like we're gonna just say that that's enough. So this count is going to be four. <clears throat> cool. Okay. And then after that, we basically just have variable length data. So variable length data, how do we figure out when it ends? That's the big question. Very, very simply. Okay. We just know that the type will give us the size of each element and we know how many there are. So if we have 2 million integers or something, uh, and I know that the size of an integer is four, for example, which it is, um, at least a 32 bit integer is, is that size. Um, I know that I have 8 million bytes to read. Okay. So we read in 8 million bytes, uh, and then that's where we end. And we know that each, every four bytes out of those 8 million bytes is a new integer that we have to basically put into, uh, that's how we can interpret that data. Okay. There we go. Done. Not that difficult at all. That's it. That is our entire format. You can see how simple it is. It's really not that complicated. Okay. Um, obviously the most complicated, the header is really simple. The most complicated thing we have is this entire object hierarchy and how we can actually read it. But that's it. It's very simple. Uh, it's really nothing to be afraid of. I'm going to walk you guys step by step through everything uh, so that you understand everything. Uh, so don't be scared. Uh, we're going to start implementing this and we're actually going to start writing code tomorrow. Okay. In a way, what we're going to do tomorrow is we're actually going to take a look at binary. Okay. And we're going to take a look at all of the bit operations that we're actually going to have to perform to manipulate these bits and how to actually write out these files and whatnot and how to actually format our data in a way that we can serialize. Okay. So basically it's going to be like a bitwise operations kind of tutorial, uh, on the next video. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm sure that a lot of you don't really know how to use these or have been avoiding using them or have been waiting for me to make a video about them. Because every time I use a bitwise operator in any of my videos or live streams, I constantly get people being like, Hey, uh, could you make a tutorial on this? Cause I have no idea how these work. So we're going to talk, we're going to cover them. Okay. And it's, they're going to be covered in such a way that could probably be applicable to more than, more than just this series. So bitwise operators and binary kind of stuff will happen next video. So get excited for that. And then after that, we'll actually move on to the code. So we'll, we will be writing code next time as well to test out this, this binary stuff. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you really enjoyed it, you can support me on patreon.com forward slash the channel where you can pledge a certain amount, a, a, a certain amount per month. And, uh, for that, you of course get rewarded. Um, if you pledge at least $5 per month, you'll get access to all the game programming source code on GitHub via a private repository and whatnot. $10 or more per month, you'll get some pretty much some premium top level support from myself where you, where, where we can just chat and and say stuff to each other and you can ask me questions and we can just have a nice conversation. That's always a good idea. Uh, if you want to have a conversation with me that doesn't involve paying anything, then you want to join Slack because, uh, if you go to slack.thechoda.com and sign up with your email address, 
uh, you will gain access to my Slack channel, which is thecherno.slack.com, okay? This is a nice little community of real-time messaging, okay? So you'll be able to talk with the 100 plus people that are currently in that community, uh, which are all of you guys, all of you uh, YouTube viewers and whatnot, and fans, and uh, and we can, I'm usually on there, so we can have a good chat usually, and uh, and it's just a really good place to hang out while you essentially write code and learn about uh, game development. So there we go. That is pretty much all I want to say. So next time, binary, bitwise operators, let's get that stuff. Let's just absolutely nail that stuff. We'll have a lot of fun with it, and uh, and it should be awesome. So I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.